In this video, we're going to take a look at the solution to question six from the practice midterm exam for Calculus 2, Math 1220. Um, so we're asked, how large do we have to choose n so that the approximation using the trapezoidal rule, Tn, um, to the integral, we want to integrate from zero to one cosine of x squared dx is accurate to within 0 0.0001 right there. And so it also gives you a little bit of disclaimer here. Notice if you take the, the second derivative of cosine of x squared, this will become negative two sine of x squared minus four x squared cosine of x squared. And so on the interval, on the interval zero to one, one could ascertain that six is actually uh, an upper bound for all of these numbers here. And sort of the idea is sine, you know, sine of x squared it's going to sit between 1 and negative 1. And so will cosine, right? Cosine will also sit between these same bounds, right? And so if you play around with that idea, sine sits between 1 and negative 1. Cosine does as well. The absolute value cannot exceed 1. Um, so what could happen is this sine could go off towards 1. This sine could go off towards 1. And then for x squared, the best, it, it's going to sit between zero and one as well. So it could go off towards one. So if we sort of think of worst case scenarios, everything becomes one, 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 one. You're getting something like negative two minus four, which is a negative six. If we take the absolute value of this, you're gonna do with six. And so that gives you some explanation where this six comes from. Is it the best bound? Not necessarily, it's not, but it's one what one could determine without a calculator whatsoever. So how are we actually gonna answer this one? So we have this idea about error and we need to work with that error here. Um, we're gonna use the error bound. So we wanna use the error bound associated to the trapezoid rule, which as a reminder, the trapezoid rule error will be less than or equal to K times B minus A cubed over 12 N squared. So that's the bound associated to the trapezoid rule. And some of these things we know, the K value is given to you, and you're gonna see that on the test as well. I'm just gonna give you the K value um, because what I want to see on this question is whether you can use correctly the error bound or not. And finding K turns out to be sort of an optimization problem, something we saw in Calculus 1. And although we probably should be able to do optimization problems, wink, wink, I'm going to assume you can do that. And so K will be given to you as a, just as a time saver on this exam. Uh, so then we plug in 1 minus 0 cubed. This sits above 12 times N squared. And then again, simplifying this, we end up with 6 over 12 n squared, uh, or more specifically, 1 over 2 n squared, like so. Now, we want our error to be less than, less than uh, 0 0.0001, or in other words, 1 out of 10,000. Right, so that's what I'm going to do here. And so we want to solve this inequality. Taking reciprocals, we see that we get 2 n squared is greater than or equal to 10,000 and divide both sides by two, we're gonna get that n squared is greater than or equal to uh, 5,000. And so now we have to take the square root n is greater than or equal to 5,000. Um, this is a step that you're gonna to want to use your calculator. And again, this shouldn't be a problem for most of us. If we take the square root of 5,000, any scientific calculator can handle this, you would get approximately uh, 70.7. Now, this n has to be an integer, for which case we would round this up to the next highest integer and we would get 71 as our answer here. Now, admittedly, if you for some reason don't have a calculator, um, I guess, I mean, honestly, you should just use the, the digital calculator that will be provided to you during the exam. So this is really sort of a mute issue. Um, but if you have your own physical calculator, you might wanna use that instead. <clears throat> now, a variation of this question, of course, is you could have a different function, of course, given with different bounds, but that mostly changes the fact, how would one calculate K, which will be given to you. Um, the bounds, of course, are significant as they're part of the error bound right here. Um, you might, you do need to know the error bound for the midpoint rule. You also need to know the error bound for Simpson's rule because that does a, that, that's a variation of this type of question here. Um, another thing to be cautious about with Simpson's rule is that if you're looking, for, once you found your number, let's say you found 70.7 as it has to be greater or equal to that. With Simpson's rule, you do have to have an even number. Um, in which case you would then round that up to 72 and not 71. Um, that is, that, that's a thing you want to watch out for on this question.